electromagnetic waves and geometrical optics. This is going to be the first part of the unit six. So here we are going to learn about waves and their characteristics. So first of all, let's begin with uh, electromagnetic waves. Let's begin with types of the waves. So uh, there are two types of the waves. Uh, the first one is going to be transverse waves. The, the second one is longitudinal uh, waves. These are the two types of the waves. But here, generally, we are going to focus on the transverse waves. So what does transverse, uh, transverse waves mean? Uh, always, like, uh, remember, the waves are produced by vib vibrations. So in a transverse waves, the vibrations are at the right angle to the direction of the movement. What does this mean here, for example, as you see, the direction of the vibration and the direction of the waves, uh, they are at 19 degrees, right angle, okay? And uh, they travel from left to the right. These waves are called transverse waves. We have mechanical waves and we have electromagnetic waves. So let's, first of all, define the mechanical waves, then we can move on to the electromagnetic waves. So mechanical waves uh, travel through some medium. That means they need material to travel through it, okay? They, can, they have frequency, period, wavelength, and amplitude, but they do not carry material. They just carry energy, okay? They just carry energy. They do not carry any materials. And they flow through the materials. They, if you put the mechanical waves inside of the vacuum, they are not going to travel. They need a material to move through it. So what about, uh, before we go to the electromagnetic waves, I want you to show you the difference between longitudinal and transverse wave. So here, the first one, as you see, uh, it is longitudinal wave. As you see over here, longitudinal waves, just they are vibrating uh, next to each other. And they are vibrate, like they vibrate uh, straight. Okay, they vibrate straight. On the other hand, for the transverse waves, as you see, they move, like a, well, like a, what is it? Like a wave. They move like that, okay? These are the transverse wave, and this this one is the longitudinal wave. So, uh, the, the direction of the energy, you can see for both of them. Again, if it's a mechanical wave, it is going to carry only energy. If it's an electromagnetic wave, it is going to carry energy and momentum together, okay? So, second one, we have electromagnetic waves. Electromagnetic wave is a kind of a transverse wave, okay? So it is uh, produced when a magnetic field and electric field at the right angles to each other. It is produced when a magnetic field and electric field uh, right and uh, right angle towards at, at each other, okay? If magnetic field and electric field are not right angles, that means we are not going to observe any electromagnetic waves. So um, the, the charts are responsible for this kind of waves. They accelerate. Uh, they have uh, in an electric and magnetic field, and they produce magnetic, electromagnetic waves. Okay, they carry energy and momentum, as you, as I told you before, they carry momentum and energy. Uh, so that that means they can move into vacuum. Okay, they do not need any medium to travel through. So unlike uh, mechanical wave, they do not need any material to travel through. So they can transfer the matter from one place to another by interaction, okay? So there are transfer waves. Let's just make it a small uh, summary. Uh, they, they do not need a medium through which to travel. They can travel through vacuum, okay? These are the characteristics of transfer uh, waves or electromagnetic waves. As you see over here, uh, these are the electromagnetic waves or transfer waves. Let's continue. So how can we represent transverse waves? So uh, first of all, we have to know some uh, physical terms in order to represent the transfer, transverse waves. The first one is amplitude. Amplitude means the maximum distance a wave moves above or below the baseline. Let's go back. So amplitude means this one, above this part or this part. That is going to be the amplitude, okay? Amplitude, above or below the baseline. We call this amplitude. The second one is the frequency. The frequency, you already know, the number of the complete waves passing given uh, point in a second, in a second. One over second is the assignment of frequency or hertz. Uh, we are gonna learn about hertz. Uh, that is the unit of frequency. Uh, the third one is the, uh, we are going to use, we are going to use, uh, abbreviate frequency by using 
ladder uh, small f. Uh, on the other hand, we have wavelength. Wavelength means the distance between successive peaks or uh, the uh, bottom, bottom of the waves. We call them wavelength. We use Greek letter lambda. This is the lambda uh, to represent wavelength. And the assigned unit of wavelength uh, we are going to consider as meter. Okay, the assigned unit of wavelength it is going to be meter. The assigned unit of frequency is going to be hertz. Okay. The other one that we have rays. You already know about rays. That there, there are straight lines extending from one po a point. They are called rays. The other one speeds. Distance traveled per unit time. As you know, we uh, distance traveled per unit time known as as speed. The assigned unit of speed, as you already know, meter per second. So. What is the relationship between frequency, wavelength, and speed? Uh, there is a relationship between them. So uh, we are going to go to the formula. So to find the speed of a wavelength, a wave, we are going to use frequency times wavelength. Okay, frequency times wavelength. Uh, if you want to write in symbol, we are going to write like this. Uh, speed of the wave is going to be equal to F times lambda, frequency times uh, wavelength, okay? So remember, frequency has one over second unit and uh, lambda has meter as a unit so when you multiply them you're going to get meter per second for speed okay uh, and uh, we can use the hertz also for the frequency one over second means hertz okay so i want to show you electromagnetic spectrum here electromagnetic spectrum uh, electromagnetic spectrum is very important because uh, there is only a small part for visible part but the other rays we cannot see them for example invisible part as you see over here this is the visible, visible part, which is very small when you compare to the other uh, part of the electromagnetic uh, waves. So here we have uh, gamma rays, X-rays, ultraviolet rays. These are dangerous rays that can uh, affect you negatively, these three rays. Yeah, on the other side of the, on the right side of the uh, visible light, we have infrared rays, microwaves, and radio waves. These rays are like less dangerous than the uh, rays on the left side of the visible light, okay? Uh, as you see, these are the their uh, wavelength. For example, gamma rays has 10 power negative 12, negative 12 meter. On the other hand, X rays has like 10 power negative 10 meter. Ultraviolet rays, ha uh, they have like 10 power negative 8 meter. Invisible part, we have six times 10 power negative 7 meter. Invisible part, you see over here, this is the visible part. Uh, on the other hand, when you go to the towards right side, the wavelength gets small, uh, gets larger and larger and larger. When you reach the radio waves, they are they have the largest wavelength, which is one meter. Okay, which is one meter. So they are slow. That's why they are slow. Okay. So let's continue. So there is a question: A water wave has a wavelength of two centimeter and a frequency of fifteen hertz. Find its speed. So to find the speed, first of all, let's write the given, what we have given. We have a lambda, which is two centimeter. When we convert into the meter, it's going to be two times sample over negative two meter, right? Two over 100. And then we have frequency 15 Hertz. Uh, we are looking for speed. So it's speed equal to frequency times uh, lambda or wavelength. When you multiply them, we are gonna get 0 0.3 meter per second speed of the uh, wavelength over here, speed of the water. 0 0.3 meter per second. Okay, this is how we are going to apply the formula into the question. So, uh, as you know, electromagnetic waves emitted by the sun. What does emitted mean? It means they are given out by sun. Okay, the sun gives us electromagnetic waves. So it has a wide range of frequency and wavelengths. Uh, this is generally re referred to electromagnetic spectrum, as is over here. This is known as electromagnetic spectrum. This one, electromagnetic spectrum. Okay, the, the, the rays which is coming from the sun are known as electromagnetic spectrum. So, uh, there are some uses of electromagnetic radiation. So the first one, visible light is very important as you know, if there is, there is no visible light, we are not going to be able to see anything. So the, basically visible light is the most important uh, thing that we need in electromagnetic radiation. The second one, X-rays, why do we use X-rays? The remember, X-rays are used to take pictures of inside the body to show any bone fractures or there is any problem in the bone or in the security part. Remember when you go to the airport, you pass the security gates, so those have X-rays. They show uh, if you have any medals, if you, have, if you carry any, anything dangerous, okay? 
Um, again, they are not like if you work uh, in an X-ray play like you know, on an X-ray device, you have to be very careful. You have to protect yourself. You have to stay away from the X-ray device, okay? Because they are dangerous. They may cause the cancer. The other one, infrared radiation. Infrared radiation. Remember, this is the right part of the visible light. So it's used to in infrared cameras. What does infrared cameras mean? It means when you go out at night, if you use the Googles, like infrared Googles, you are going to be see, you're going to see everything clearly. So uh, generally soldiers, uh, security people, they use infrared cameras in order to check what's going on around, okay? So the fourth one is microwaves and radio waves. These, are, are very, these waves are very important because we use these rays for communication, like radio and telephone signals are coming from uh, microwaves and radio waves. So that's why these two rays are very important as well, okay? So 